Welcome to the Z Huts Mad Scientist Laboratory. I'm Professor Z, and today we're going to attempt to take over the world using Arduinos. Grab your favorite Arduino board and put on your tinfoil hat because it's time to build. <laughs> Today, we will be attempting to take over the world by Bluetooth controlling with our smartphone a pan and tilt platform. Now, what I'll do here is I'll demonstrate the app working and then we'll go ahead and go through everything and how it works and we'll take a look at the, the app and then we'll take a look at the Arduino sketch. So I'm going to go ahead and connect, select my Bluetooth device. Oh. Sometimes when the phone is really close to the other Bluetooth device, it'll glitch like that. All right, now it's loaded up. So as you can see, we just have two sliders. We have an up and down and left and right. So as I move it, it will turn it to the left or to the right. It'll go down or up. Now this would work great if you had a wireless security Wi-Fi camera. You could place it on there and then you could use this to control the movement of your pan and tilt for the camera and then just have your video receive on a TV monitor. <coughs> All right, um, for a copy of the app, I will go through it real quick. We'll go over, it's made in MIT App Inventor, but um, most likely you'll just want to download it. You just look in the description below and you'll find a link to this project's website. And, um, you can download the app there or I'll have the block diagram for MIT App Inventor in case you want to go through modify it design your own version of this and the Arduino code will also be there along with a schematic on how to everything is wired up and there will also be a parts list on there with links to where to get the parts in case there's something here that you do not have all right so I'm going to go ahead and put disconnect the phone set that out of the way and then I'm going to go ahead and power this down so we have here is we've got our pan and tilt device um, it's just a little stand made for a uh, wireless camera that um, a lot of people use these for putting on drones it's just a little simple cheap pan and tilt platform it uses the micro 9 gram servos it has two of them in there and I've got those connected up here. I've got my own. I made some little adapters so that I can plug it into the breadboard. Just remember the, um, the orange lead on these goes to is the input for the servo. The red, the middle wire, is the 5 volt positive, and the brown wire, that is your ground. So I have. Um, Let's see here, I've got the two servos um, hooked up to digital pin 3 and digital pin 5, and I'm using a Pro Mini, that's just what I had. Um, a lot of times I like Nanos, but I had, uh, all those are being used right now, and I've got a bunch of these Pro Mini, so I just went ahead and used that. Any Arduino board will work. I have a 5 volt power s supply here, it's one that I built, because um, unlike the Nanos, Unos, the others, this does not have a very good uh, regulator. It can regulate a little bit, but I found if you put uh, pretty much anything over 9 volts, I put on a couple of these and it's fried them through the raw input. So whenever I use nanos, I just go ahead and use my own. Um, I've got these little voltage regulators and it's just a simple little circuit. Um, then we just have our Bluetooth module. I'm using the HCO6. You can use um, there's a whole bunch of new Bluetooth modules that have been coming out. There's some replacements for these. They're, they're all going to work. 
um, pretty much whatever you want to choose, HCO6, HCO5, or any of the new ones. And uh, because I'm using a Pro Mini, I don't have a three volt reference supply voltage source, so I had to use a voltage divider on the, uh, the transmit from the board to the receive on the Bluetooth module. Because the Bluetooth module is powered, it has to be powered by um, at least 3.3 volts. Five volts works perfect. Its maximum voltage is six. Um, five is what's recommended. But um, the logic levels on these, it's three volt. So because I didn't have a three volt reference from the board, I used a voltage divider where normally I would use um, logic level converters. I do prefer them. Um, so if you're using a nano or some other board, I would go with the logic level converter instead of the voltage divider. But a voltage divider will work. I just prefer the um, logic level converters myself. It, they are better. Um, with that, that's everything for how the we got here on the circuit. Um, I will have a schematic of this. I'll make one up and that will also be on the web page for this project's web page. So let's go over. I'm just going to do a real quick look at the uh, app for this and MIT App Inventor. I'm just going to show you the values we're sending in case you wanted to hook more of these up or change that. Um, pretty much the rest of it you're not going to want to mess with. And like I said, I will have the block diagram and stuff on the website as well so that you can go there if you want to make your own. Otherwise, you can just download a version of mine and it's completely free. And I guarantee you it's virus free as long as you get it from my website, not somewhere else. So, all right, I'll catch you at the computer in just a second. All right, I got MIT App Inventor opened up here. Um, we're going to go through this real quick. It's pretty simple um, anyway, but we're going to go through it real quick because most likely you're just going to want to download my uh, app and just use it. But if you do want to modify it yourself, put your own logo on it and change the background or whatever, um, you will find the blocks and, and that on the uh, website. So, all right, let's get into it here. I just have here as a list picker. It has a connect button, and uh, we got a display. We're using virtual screens because once you connect to Bluetooth, if you change screens, Bluetooth drops, it disconnects. So we're doing everything on one screen, we're just doing them in a virtual. So once we connect, the connect button disappears and the disconnect button appears, and this is just a button. And then I have a, um, a label here, and I just got down and up, and then I've got a slider right here below it. Then I have another, um, let's see, didn't I put, oh, I thought I put a label. Yes, I did right there. I got a label between there to act like a spacer. That's label two here. I forgot to change the name of it, but that right there just acts as a spacer between, whoop, between um, the up and down and the left and right. Which again here, we have left and right, we have a, a label here for that. And then we have a slider right here. And I set the sliders. So you go to this one here, it has a minimum value of zero, a maximum of 180. You go to this one here, the second slider, and it's the same thing. Max value, 180, minimum value, zero. All right, let's get to the blocks here real quick. So here's what we're doing. Um, if you've used used MIT App Inventor before, doing Bluetooth, we're just you know setting the list picker elements, getting our list of available Bluetooth devices. Then once you select one from that list, you're connecting to it. Then if it does connect and it finds it's connected, then what we're doing is we're getting rid of the connect button, we're making the disconnect button visible, and then we're making the servo buttons, or sliders, excuse me, and the servo text visible, all we're doing there. Then I just have here, when, this, when the slider position changes, it's just calling the Bluetooth client, and we're sending two byte numbers. Remember to send two byte numbers. One byte numbers, four byte numbers, for some reason with Arduino, I've, I've had glitches and problems a lot of the time. 
With two byte numbers, I don't have any problems. It works great. So I just remember to send two byte. When we get over to the Arduino set sketch, I'll show you how we bring a two byte number in, beams it's receiving on one byte. But it does still work better than trying to send one byte numbers. Plus, you can send bigger numbers to boot. So we're just taking the slider and we're rounding it. And um, because it'll give you a decimal point value on the slider. So we're just rounding it and then sending that through the Bluetooth. If our second slider is changed, that's the left and right slider. We're doing is we're taking and adding 1000 to that number. And when we get over to the Arduino sketch, you'll understand why. But we're taking and taking 1000 plus the rounded slider value and we're sending that when the sec when the right and left slider is moved. All right, that's all there is to the MIT App Inventor Sketch, or excuse me, Sketch um, App. And once again, just remember, you can go look in the description below, you'll find a link to this project's webpage and you can find the block diagram there or you can just download the app from there. All right, let's bring up the Sketch. So we're including our servo.h library that should already be in your Arduino IDE unless you've deleted it. So you should have it. Then we're just naming our two servos. I'm just calling it servo one and servo two. Then we're starting our serial uh, monitor because we're running at 9600. Um, you don't have to change anything in MIT. It just default runs 9600. I'm sure there's a way to change it, but I've never messed with it. Just by default, it seems to work at 9600, so I would leave that alone. Then we're attaching our servos, and we're just setting them um, both to the middle position, 90. And so we're attaching servo 1 to digital pin 3, and servo 2 to digital pin 5, and then we're writing them both to 90, which is right in the middle. Down in the void loop, we're checking for a two byte number, which means serial.available has to be greater than or equal to two, which means a two byte number is there. Don't change this right here. This is the little equation that takes those two one byte numbers it just received and combines them back together into the original number. Then we just do an if and an else if statement. We're checking if the value that's coming in is between zero and 180. Well, it just automatically writes that, and that's the um, servo number one, the up and down, the, <clears throat> the tilt. And otherwise, it's an else if the value coming in is between 1,000 and 1,180. Now, remember, in, app IT, in MIT App Inventor, right here, we set this to add 1,000. That's how we're differentiating which slider is being moved when it's being received by the Arduino. So what it's doing is it's, <clears throat> it's detecting that value. Then what we're doing here, I've got a map on both of these. On mine, the, the up and the down, it went opposite. So I just did a map change because at zero, it was at the, where I wanted it to be at 180. So we're just swapping it. Uh, most likely you will have to do the same thing, but defending, depending on your configuration, maybe you, you're mounting the, the pan and tilt platform upside down, then it would be reversed and you would not need to have this map. You could just comment that out or delete it. But then we're just writing that value to the servo. So we're doing a servo.write. And then here in the LCF, we're taking that map once again, when I went to, with the slider, I wanted it to move right, it was moving left because of the orientation of the servo. So I just mapped it and reversed the 1,000 and 1,180 to 1,180 to 1,000. And then when I do the servo right, I just minus the 1,000. Now I did try in the map, I tried to map it to 180 and zero. It didn't want to work for me. It was glitching out. I'm not sure why. I would have thought it would have worked, but it didn't. Um, maybe it's just my particular Arduino board. I don't know. So I just went ahead in the, in this, in the servo.write 
I just it did the val minus the 1000. It works perfect then. Then I just have a delay of 25 milliseconds, and that's just to allow the servo to move, and you know, so we're not overrunning the program. Um, if you start overrunning, what'll happen is it'll glitch, it'll glitch, and it'll freeze. I found between 25 and 50 works. 25 works pretty good. If you are expecting to be moving this thing at warp speed, both sliders almost simultaneously and moving it real, real, real quick, then increase the number a little bit if you're finding glitches. But if you use this and it doesn't glitch out, leave it at 25. Don't go below this. Um, I tried it at 15 and I was getting glitches quite often. So, all right, that's all there is to it. I hope you understood everything. If you have a question, please leave, uh, leave your question in the comments. I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. With that, um, I think we can go ahead and wrap this up. Once again, remember, look in the description below, find the link to the, this project's webpage. You'll find the schematic, you'll find the um, Arduino sketch, you'll find the block diagram of the app, you'll find a link to download the app, the uh, APK file, and uh, parts list, and all the fun stuff. So, all right. Well, um, I hope you found this information useful. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, share this uh, if you've got some friends, people you know that might find it interesting. Share it with them. So with that, um, I'll just say, well, I hope you have a great day. And remember, and remember, this is very, very important. Make sure to wear your tinfoil hat at all times when you're building or programming your Arduino board. We do not want the government, the men in black, or the aliens to know what we're up to.